Hi everybody, welcome to Dram Daddy Whiskey. I'm Dan and tonight we're gonna to be trying a whiskey that's got some smoke influence, it's got some peat influence, but we're not gonna try a peated scotch. Instead, we're gonna be trying a barrel select of High West's Double Rye finished in a peated scotch cask. High West Double Rye is a really good shelf rye whiskey. With the Double Rye in particular, I believe that it has a higher than normal percentage of malted barley than a lot of other ryes on the market do. I'm a big fan of those types of ryes, the ones with a high malted barley content, including dull rye. This bottle right here is from a Barrel Select. A shop local to me bought a whole cask of High West Double Rye Whiskey. This one was finished in peated scotch casks. And it is a, it's a blend of straight ryes. Uh, and it says on the back that they're at least two years old. Um, so that's all that we really know. One's sourced by High West, and it's the younger of the two, still at least two year. It's blended with another rye that's distilled by High West that's a little bit older, um, but it still only carries that two year age statement. And then those, after being combined together, were then put into this peated scotch cask. High West does have their double rye and a lot of other finishes, um, a lot of different wine finishes. I've even seen maple barrels. I've even seen a double rye finished in an old midwinter nice dram barrel a pretty cool idea. And from the label here, we can tell that the finish time, so the amount of time the double rye was in the peated scotch cast was nine months. And we're looking at 50.7 ABV, which puts us at 101.4 proof. I've never had an American whiskey that has any peat influence to it. I've had a ton of peated scotches. I love them. I think they're delicious. Peated scotch is one of the things that really got me into whiskey, uh, at least like drinking it neat as opposed to in cocktails. I'm a peat guy. I don't know what to think of this. Let's see what we think. Let's coat the glass here, make sure we can get hopefully some nuance from the peat as we draw our nose a little bit closer instead of just sticking it right in. Initially, without diving too deep into this, I do smell the malt from the double rye um, that carries that really strong sweetness to it, but there is the peat influence as well. If I didn't know this was peated, just from smelling it so far, I would know something was up, but I don't know that I would know that it's peated. It almost smells like a little bit mesquite and then it's really weird when you get deeper in. I, it's hard for me to tell what I think about the nose. I like the double rye that I get from it, the malted barley that lends it that sweetness. I like when I pick up on notes of that smoke and then it comes back to the sweetness of the rye. I enjoy that. I can't tell if I enjoy the smoke itself. Again, it doesn't smell a whole lot like peat exactly, but it does smell like smoke and a little bit like mesquite or like some kind of, I can't pick the specific kind, but like a pellet you might put into your Traeger. Can't tell if I like it for sure. Let's see if that changes once I start to taste it, if that affects the nose at all. On the palate, the sweetness is gone. I don't get any of the double rye, like the actual base spirit at all. All that malted goodness I smelled in the nose that it was great to come back from the smoke to was gone. I'm just left with that. It's it's not exact, it's definitely not like a peat smoke. It is smoky. Again, it's like mesquite or like when you get a barbecue lay chip and you get a really, really heavy on the barbecue chip, like something that's just coated in it and you eat it and it's that aftertaste that's left in your mouth. That's that's what this seems to be, but, but not as sweet, almost like, um, like stale, like it's, it's lasted a while. Like it's been a while since you've had the chip and but you're still left with that, that taste that's just like lingering. Kind of like when sugar, you have something really sugary and then a while later it starts to turn in your mouth, that flavor, it's not the best. Let's see if it improves at all. You know, the nose is, I'm still picking up the rye on the nose and I like it. Okay, so on the front palate, especially when my mouth is closed and you know, in the front of your lips, I still am picking up some of that double rye, which is good. But then it transitions into just this, like a smoky mess. I mean, it's not overpoweringly smoky, but it's not really good. I don't really like it very much. This isn't a whiskey that's like, particularly bad, like at least insofar as I wouldn't fin drink it or, or finish it. It was the only thing that a bar had and I really felt like having some whiskey. I don't know that I'd be ever really excited to drink this neat. I just, I don't really like it very much at all. Like I said, I've never had a peat influenced American whiskey ever. So I don't know if the effect of a peated scotch cask on a rye will always taste like this. I certainly hope not, 
but it's gonna scare me from wanting to spend money to try one of these again, because double rye is priced pretty well in most circumstances, usually between like four, 30 to 40 where I am. This is not, this is over double that. I'm not very happy with this purchase at all. Well, I don't wanna belabor this, let's get to the score. It's passable, it's drinkable, it's not so bad that if it was the only whiskey at a bar, I would pass on it all together. Although I gotta be honest, if I was at a wedding and all they had was this and beer and wine, I'd probably be sticking with beer and wine all night. For a score, I put this at an even 4.0. This is barely passable. And if you're not a Pete fan, I, uh, <laughs> it might not even be passable for you. I'm really not that sure. As far as value goes, yeah, it's just awful. D minus, F. I don't know. You can't get a whole lot of peat influenced American whiskeys. That's the one saving grace, if you want to call it that, that this has, is that these do pop up from time to time, even in like total wines for purchase. But I really don't enjoy it. It was a lot of money for something that in my opinion kind of sucks. We'll give it a D minus just because it is a bit unique, but it might be unique for completely the wrong reasons. Please let me know if there is some whiskey out there, aside from scotches, that has a peated influence to it. An American whiskey with some kind of peat influence. That is good. If you've tried one that I should try, let me know, because I'm not willing to give up just yet. Please tell me in the comments what I should be trying next to not ruin peat in American whiskey for me. Until next time, cheers.